Hello and welcome back. In the previous video, we discussed the algorithm that uh, lexical analysis would follow. In this video, let's uh, take a look into some of the details of ambiguities that occur in lexical analysis and how we address this am these ambiguities. So the first uh, ambiguity we have is uh, the one that uh, we discussed previously, which is how much input is used. So uh, how much input is used. And uh, the question, to put it more formally, what it means is that um, what if x1 uh, and so on up to xi belongs to L of R, but uh, x1 and so on up to xj also belongs to L of R. Um, and of course here uh, i is not equal to j. So uh, this is one thing that could happen and uh, this is exactly the situation that we discussed earlier which is something like equals versus uh, equals equals. So uh, in this specific uh, scenario what's going to happen is um, uh, i is just going to be 1 and j is going to be 2 but uh, equals is a valid um, is going to be a valid identifier um, equal equals is also going to be a valid um, sorry uh, not an identifier but a token class so equals is going to belong to some token class equal equals is going to belong to some token class and uh, that's just going to be uh, an ambiguity here whether it should be taken as an equals or a double equals and uh, this is actually um, solved in a very simple way and uh, the solution actually has a name and it's called uh, maximal munch. So it's called maximal munch. And that is exactly what the solution is. The solution is if you have um, two in uh, two different length strings in the input, which both belong to L of R, then just take the longer one. If I is greater than J, take uh, take it till xi if j is greater than i then just take it till xj so whenever you have two equal symbols together it will always consider it as uh, the relational operator which is uh, checking the equality condition uh, and not assignment so that is how this ambiguity is solved and uh, there's another ambiguity about which token is used so Second, we have um, which token class. So which token class to be used. Um, and what this means is that uh, what if I have x1, x2 and so on up to uh, xi belongs to some L of Rj, but x1, x2 and so on up to xi also belongs to some L of Rk. And uh, there are some interesting scenarios where uh, this would come up. Uh, for example, there, uh, there's uh, PL1, Programming Language 1, where the keywords were not reserved. Now, what that meant was uh, you could have a variable called uh, if, you could have a variable called then, you could have a variable called else, all of that. And now, uh, whenever it encountered um, um, the word if it needed to uh, decide whether it was uh, a keyword or um, or an identifier and um, there's also different uh, other scenarios where this could occur and uh, this is actually solved using a very simple technique nowadays uh, what we do is we define a priority order so uh, in our priority order whatever is the top is at the top it tries matching uh, x1, x2 and so on up to xi with that and um, if it does match then uh, it doesn't need to go, uh, it doesn't need to look anymore. This is the one that's going to be used. So uh, the answer to this is just a priority order, priority order. And um, the third ambiguity that um, I want to talk about is uh, what if no rule matches? Now, uh, that's another interesting scenario. 
uh, in our algorithm what's going to happen if no rule matches is uh, it's going to get stuck we didn't specify any scenario for if no rule matches now uh, the way that can be avoided and um, is this is often done is that we don't let that situation occur at all so uh, do take note of this this is an interesting one so uh, what if no rule matches what if no rule matches so uh, in this scenario what is uh, what's done is we also have an error class in our token classes uh, and uh, we know that anything that doesn't match any of the other classes matches the error class and um, what we do is uh, we employ a trick uh, which actually simplifies our work what we do is we keep the error class the last in our priority order and uh, the way it simplifies our work is that uh, when we put it last we can be a little lazy when defining the error class because uh, it's only going to get to the error class in the first place if none of the above um, regular expressions match. So we could, uh, you know, loosely describe the error class. So that's the third and last ambiguity that I wanted to talk about. One thing that I do want you to take note of is that um, some of these ambiguities also have drawbacks. Uh, uh, in fact, some of the solutions we mentioned have some drawbacks. So, for example, consider the maximal munch and the maxim maximal munch is exactly what is going to cause uh, the nested templates in CPP uh, to malfunction and uh, it would also uh, cause some issues if I had uh, an expression of uh, this kind, if I had something like um, x divided by star uh, z. Now, uh, what's going to happen is um, uh, this star, uh, this thing right here, the slash and star together, uh, that starts a block comment. And uh, uh, that's actually not what we uh, intend to do in this scenario. What we uh, instead want is that uh, Z is, let's say, a pointer and uh, we're using star for uh, the value at the address Z. That's what we intend this to do. Uh, this may not be very common, but uh, this is something that uh, that's going to uh, malfunction because of the maximal munch rule. So uh, it does have drawbacks, but um, we accept some of these because um, otherwise it becomes extremely difficult to uh, define and write our lexical analyzers. So the solution to this is to write it uh, as something like x divided by uh, star of z with the parentheses or uh, just include a space. So x uh, divided by and then a space and then a star of z. So all of these work. Uh, although the C++ thing, the nested templates thing has been fixed, uh, there still are some drawbacks that we uh, put up with. So that, that's about ambiguities in lexical analysis. I hope you understood uh, what the ambiguities are and uh, what solutions have been proposed and are being used uh, to solve these ambiguities. If you did like the video, you know the drill. Like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.